so I am walking right now through the streets of Crown Heights. It is about an hour and a half before the holiday begins. It's a holiday of Sukkot, as you see this, all these huts set up. It's a eight day holiday um, where we eat, and some people sleep, we live in these huts. Um, we mainly live inside, but I would say eating more. Um, inside these huts and I guess studying Torah um, doing your regular day-to-day -day things try to do as much as you can inside <sighs> see his huts everywhere along it's an hour and a half to the holiday so it is hustle bustle around here it's, a very, it's just a very joyous crazy holiday there's a lot of things that people need to get done before the holiday starts um, see this house everywhere along. I just want to show you what it's like an hour and a half beforehand. The reason why the streets are extremely packed is because thousands of people come from everywhere really different uh, countries to spend this holiday here in New York. The settings over there selling flowers for people. Very common for people to buy flowers for their spouses before the holiday. But simply the holiday is the holiday we remember when we were in the desert for 40 years. God protected us. Shem protected us from all sides. Um, and that we we remember by living in these huts. We also lived in huts in the desert. So when we're in the hut, the hut is called a sukkah. When we live inside of them, we show Hashem. We show, we remind ourselves that as a Jew, Hashem is always watching over us and protecting us. So thousands of people come from Israel, from France, um, to spend the holiday here because here is actually the headquarters of, of Chabad. So everyone wants to spend the beginning of the year, uh, whoever can, um, at the headquarters of Chabad. That way, you can go home and have a Chabad full year, I guess. Here, there's like an hour and a half to sell these because these are the four different plants that you are supposed to bring together on this holiday. And there's only an hour, hour and a half left for them to actually be worth anything. Actually, I need to get some wine. I'm gonna bring some wine to the hostess with the most. Very common feel to bring wine to those that are hosting them. Okay, go around and see that tomorrow. And some of the good stuff. As we say, Lachaim is a very joyous holiday, so. Um, there's a lot of L'chaim being said on this holiday, unlike the first two holidays, which is more Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, which is very serious holidays. Can't go wrong with some clutter us. And that's it. That is us. Ready? Okay. You don't have... Oh, that's a weird question. You know that sparkling red wine that Ruskins always buy? Okay. Yeah, I'm thank you. Okay, now I'm gonna go. I'm gonna head to the different places that I'm eating. I don't think I'm a wine bottle. That is the custom. It's much easier than uh, making the whole meal for yourself. We get away with a lot. You know, these people spend days preparing for their uh, Yom Tov meals and what we need to do is show up with a wine bottle, so that suits us. Because it's Shabbat, we don't carry on Shabbat, so you have to bring anything that you're bringing. If it's wine, if it's flowers, you gotta bring it beforehand. See, so look right here. Now it's crunch time, so in about an hour, all of this stuff is not gonna be, it's gonna be valueless. So you can probably get it for pretty cheap now. It's a big hustle tap because they don't want to sell it for nothing, but uh, in an hour it's going to be worth nothing. So they end up throwing out. Excuse me. Yeah, if you want to get anywhere, you got to push your way through. Let's keep going. 
This is all right here on the floor. You see, that's all the stuff that people are using to cover the sukkah because the sukkah needs to be of natural uh, branches. So, this is what they use in New York. Where I'm from, Australia, we actually use more palm trees. Um, but I guess you use whatever is available to you. It's just crazy to think that. Right before this holiday, it bucketed, poured and poured and poured, it's flooding with tons of people's sukkahs have been destroyed right before the holiday. Not enough time, not enough time to fix them. I just think it's crazy, but one thing for sure is that this neighborhood in particular, you will definitely see them still eating in the sukkah tonight, no matter how wet or how uncomfortable it is. But it's a very big deal. We look at rain as a sign of blessing, not the opposite. So um, even though you don't need to eat in a sukkah, if you're uncomfortable, um, especially if it rains, yet yeah, the Bible still nevertheless fight it out and uh, still eat in a sukkah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's part of the idea that it's not, it's not a holiday in the summertime or it's the perfect time for a hut. It's a holiday. It's a holiday, right? Right in between uh, the full time, where it starts getting cold. Where you, everyone starts going inside. When everyone starts going inside. We go outside because if it was during the summertime, you would think, okay, Jews are just, you know, culturally in the summer they like to eat in huts. That makes sense. Wouldn't actually represent anything. We do it specifically in the full time. That shows that we can't, we're not doing it for, for comfort, but for pleasure. There has to be a message here. There has to be a reason why we're doing it. And that is to remind ourselves that God's always watching us and protecting us, just like he did in the desert. This street here is actually, it's called Kingston Avenue. It is the main street of Chabad where all the main stores are um, and yeah, some very few of them are open now because they're all prepped up for the holiday you see people from many many places they are from Australia the people that just that's why they give me a little bit of a, a wave I only realized who they are after I passed them, so I guess I couldn't say hello. Let's walk down here, see more. Snake so wagon right to the line. There's uh, a terrarium can go for thousands of dollars, but I guess on average they're about expensive ones. They're at three hundred dollars. Um, you can get them for $20, $30 in question. But the more nicer they are, the more of a mitzvah it is. Specifically the Esser. Because they're described in the Torah as a beautiful um, branch, as a beautiful plant, sorry, sorry, as a beautiful fruit. And the more beautiful it is, the more more of a mitzvah that would be so when they're extremely yellow and symmetrical they don't have any scratches no blemishes those ones are the expensive ones and some people are willing to pay for it you know it sounds odd to pay for something like that but it's all about priorities everyone chooses to use their money on different things everyone uh, has their things that they're gonna put money in and if you think it's weird to put couple hundred dollars down on a lemon it's, a, it's just because those are not your priorities of course you think it's sweet uh -huh. it's the exact same reason that you'll never find anyone in this neighborhood sending your kids to public school 
although it's free because uh, it's not even it's a non-negotiable that you're going to be uh, you value the Jewish education that means it takes away from vacations it takes away from things that you can't spend your money on that regular families would so be it everything comes down to priorities I want to show you all something something that's really really special over here this is a home this is a house of somebody who sponsors all the guest food for the entire month Look how big this sukkah is. I'm going to show you. I'm going to take you in. Sukkah hasn't begun. It's beginning tonight. Look how big this is. Probably the biggest sukkah you've ever seen. We'll walk right through it. See everyone is preparing their loves and their asterisks. Like that. Look at this. Walk right through it. Epically huge. Um, so this was a tent for the first part of the holiday um, and then now it's gonna be stuck with its natural leaves there's four walls Brooklyn that you can hear look there if you look right down this is right in the middle of the street so there is nothing Right in the middle of the, well, it's on the side of the street. It's a huge, huge wide street. Look how big it was. Epically long sukkah. So this is going to be filled tonight with uh, setting up for thousands of people who came in um, and don't have a place to eat, so they're going to eat over there. It's pretty, pretty crazy. Um, the amount of nasazarim of welcoming guests happens um, for over the next month because they just can't, the community cannot handle all the guests. So people like that, very special people have to dedicate their time, house, and money to feeding everybody else. And we learned that from Abraham, you know, from Abraham, the first Jew, who was known to always welcoming guests. That's why they call that tent, Abraham Avino's tent, the tent after Abraham. So now let's go back into Kingston Avenue. I have to get some rings to tie my lulav together. I'll grab some rings and I'll show you a few more, a bit more action that's happening. Now it's starting to rain again, which uh, is watering everybody. So the sickers are already drenched and hasn't even started the holiday. Where is she? I love it. More flowers. Every type of person selling. Dry cleaners are always packed before because so people want to get nice clean clothes before the holiday. It's a two day holiday, which means it goes from now all the way till after uh, Sunday night. Sunday night. Then it's going to be begin huge dancing. Look at this. This is like the last moments before. Everything's going to be valueless and like 40 minutes from now. I need his rings. Anyone with I need rings. Do you do you sell the strips? Break these. How much would it be for five Nothing. rings? Thank you. These Can I just take it? These are my possible things, yeah. Thank I you. I mean, I would prefer that you just break up. How about I'll give you a dollar and then I'll take it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
Okay, now I'm gonna use this for my uh, rings to tie my Lula together. Oh, I have to show you this. This is a tent that they set up. Um, they set it up for the entire holiday. I wanna show you how big it is. It's huge, epically huge. So this is for praying because inside is just too small. Even though inside is huge, they set this up along the entire tree for the month. Um, look how, look how nice it is. It's, it's just a tent. Look at, look at it right here. It goes all the way. Basically similar size to this. This is just for studying and praying and davening throughout the uh, week. I uh, mean throughout the month, what am I saying? This is 770 right here at the headquarters. And that is the Rebbe Sukkah. Same sukkah that the Rebbe used um, before 1992. I think it's the same one. Sure hope it is. Tons of police around, obviously. So I'm going to put together our lula. Just so epic. Like, some people just can't handle this. This is the epitome of uh, New York City. It's crazy, that's all the time. 